My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I was preaching missions in one parish. After my sermon, a lady came up to me in tears and said, Father, you preached a beautiful sermon on marriage and family, but my marriage is falling apart. My husband is addicted to pornography and it's destroying the sanctity of our marriage. My husband's addiction makes me feel worthless, that I'm not good enough. Please preach about it. My dear friends, this is just one of the many such stories that I come across as a priest, confessor, and counselor. It is alarming. It is alarming. When the wife confronted her husband about it, he retorted by saying, what's wrong with it? Everybody's doing it. Just because everybody's doing it doesn't make it right. The first question, of course, is why is pornography wrong? Pornography is not just seeing naked bodies and sexual acts being described or screened for the sake of sexual arousal. It is also about the degradation of men and women and children and the exploitation of them. It is dehumanizing, making dirty one of God's good gifts and treating people as objects as things to be used and abused for our pleasure. Why is it so alarming? Because pornography, my dear friends, is a multi-million dollar industry and is present everywhere, everywhere. And it's invading our homes, our families, our marriages, and our children. First, why is it wrong? The first thing I want you to remember is that God made sex. God created sex and God ordained sex within the context of marriage between the spouses, that their sexual union should be open to life. God made sex as something beautiful, something to be celebrated. And because God created sex, it is sacred and holy. And what have we done? What have we done to something that is so sacred and holy? Because it is through sex in marriage, we communicate the graces of God. It becomes a sacrament. And we have debased this beautiful gift of God. And that's why St. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Corinthians chapter 6, do you not know, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells within you? And Jesus reminds us in the gospel, anyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery in his heart. By watching pornography, my dear friends, you are promoting exploitation of women and children. You are promoting and contributing towards human trafficking of women and children. And by watching pornography, you are approving such evil acts. Some people might say, well, me watching pornography does not hurt anyone. I'm doing it in the privacy of my room. How does it hurt anyone? That's where you are wrong. The first one it hurts is yourself. It affects the way you relate with your own self. It leads to self-abuse. It affects the way you relate with others. 
because you begin to see others not as human beings, not as God's masterpiece, not as someone who is sacred, but as objects of pleasure, something that you desire out of lust. And that is the reason why so many sexual attacks against women today. It's an expression of male dominance over women. It affects our marriages, the way we relate with our spouses. It debases you and everyone. Pornography is dangerously addictive. It's more addictive than the drugs because the more you watch it, it desensitizes you and it makes you to go for more and more and more, a slippery slope. So what are we to do about it? The basic way to overcome addiction as the Alcoholic Anonymous have a principle, the first principle of AA is to admit that we have a problem. Admit that we are powerless by ourselves and to overcome it, we need a higher power. And that's the first step to become aware, to admit, and that's the first step towards healing, towards conquering a problem. To admit that I have a problem and we need a higher power because we can't do it on our own. And we as Catholics, we are so blessed with a wonderful sacrament, the sacrament of confession. And it is in the sacrament of confession we experience the tremendous power and the liberating grace of God. Where we come into the sacrament as humble as we are, pleading for the grace of God to liberate us, to set us free. And it's so important to humble ourselves and say, God, I need you. And that's what St. Paul did. God, I'm struggling with this thorn in my flesh. I try so hard, but it makes me do the things I do not want to do. And God says to St. Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. For when you're weak, I make you strong. For we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. For we are more than conquerors in Christ. And the first thing is to rely on God's grace. And so, if you are an addict or you're getting there, don't focus on your problem. Focus on God. Let the spotlight be on Jesus, and he will give you the grace to overcome it. Ask the Lord, with the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, to set you free. Some of the things that I often say to those who come to me in the confessional, Idle mind is devil's workshop. The more idle you keep yourself, it leads you into the path of sin. So keep yourself occupied into something meaningful. In getting yourself and using your talent into meaningful things so that it brings meaning and joy and purpose to your life. Avoid occasions of sin. It is like domesticating a poisonous cobra. You cannot. You're playing with fire. Avoid occasions of sin. And most important of all, have recourse to our Blessed Mother. She is chaste and pure, immaculate. And always say this prayer, Immaculate Heart of Mary, make me pure in thought and word and deed like thine. And may our Mother of Hope a mother so chaste and pure, immaculate, intercede for all of us and give us the grace to appreciate this wonderful gift of sexuality and to relate with one another the way God wants us to. Amen.